Biafrans are not terrorists. I live with them. To be a red, the Labour Party flag bearer has come out to say that the Biafrans are not terrorists. Welcome to a misery news. Now, when they bring you the topmost news where they happen for all over the world, don't forget to like our channel. Oh. Don't forget to comment. Oh. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to on your notification button so that whenever our news they drop, now you go be the first we will collect them. Or you are listening to the news proper. The Labour Party presidential candidate P2B has downplayed claims that the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, is a terrorist organization. Obi maintained that IPOP members are not terrorists. The Nigerian government has proscribed the indigenous people of Biafra following the agitation for the actualization of Biafra. Despite the proscription, IPOB and its leader Nan Dekano had continued to push for the actualization of Biafra. But the separatist group had denied the terrorist attack by the Nigerian government. However, Obi backed claims that members of the group are not terrorists. Speaking with channels television, the presidential candidate said IPOB members around him do not constitute a threat to the country. According to Obi, the only thing I disagree with is naming IPOB terrorists. They are not terrorists. Those who took the decision may have information that I don't have. I stay in Onicha and I can tell you that they are people. I pass them on the road every day. I meet and live with them. In fact, I usually see people gathering and I have never had the sense of threat or molestation from them even when they gather. So the, the, pre, uh, the, the, the presidential candidate of Labour Party has come out to say his mind on this issue that uh, I, I pop members are terrorists. You know, uh, one thing you need to understand is that what is actually happening in Nigeria is that some Nigerian citizens are not learned. I, I don't know why a primary sees a, a, a certificate holder should be the president of a nation where people that are holding certificates, where there are professors, where there are masters, where there are chartered and accountants, where people have, have read in different kinds of universities, of Oxford, Cambridge, and the rest of them. I think that is the issue that we are suffering in Nigeria. I think the Nigerians need to change the narrative. In order to conclude the matter, you need to take a proper investigation. You need to have a deeper understanding. You don't need to judge with prejudice. You need to look at the matter the way it is in order for you to be able to give an effective and proper judgment to that matter. But as it stands with the issue in Nigeria, people in Nigeria judge with prejudice. They judge with tribe. They judge with race. Why will a Nigerian judging a Nigerian will be a Nigerian judging a Nigerian with his race? The Yorubas are on their side. The Alsas are on their side. The Igbos are on their side. And if you should ask me, I will tell you that the Igbo man is the most patriotic as far as Nigeria is concerned. Go to Sokoto. You will see an Igbo man's shop. You will see an Igbo man's mansion. Go to Lagos State. You will see an Igbo man's business. You will see an Igbo man's shop. You will see an Igbo man's company. You will see an Igbo man's mansion in another man's land. Go to Zamfara. You will still see the same thing. Go to oh, Kogi State. As far as Kogi is, you know, it surprised me the other time. I was traveling from uh, Enugu to Abuja. Then I found out that you know, I was trying with my app. I I I, I was trying to use uh, uh, the Google GPS to be able to locate where I'm going. And as far as inside OG, I located an Igbo man with name Chukwe Mecca ha having a POS center inside Kogi village. So I, I I don't know why things are like this in Nigeria. Why people are judging with prejudice? Why people are very tribalistic in managing the issues that concerns the nation? 
Of course, if you want a nation to move forward, okay, let's remove the ideology of Biafra and also the Biafra pushing to have their own country. Of course, you know what brought about the Biafra agitation in 1967? It is because of marginalization. Now, if we are to shift that ideology and remove it from the minds of the people, of course, the people need to be a balance. Everybody, look at what is happening in Lagos State, where the Igbos have developed their businesses, Satellite Town, Alapa International Market, that has been there for years if not up to centuries. Now, some people are coming to push these people from where they are doing their business to another place. Meanwhile, they have been there all this while. Why should not the government of Lagos State bring out that place and say, map it out. This place is particularly for such kind of business. You go to Ladebo Market, you see where the Igbo man, it looks as if that place is is an evil land. Let me tell you, if you live in a place like Ladebo, Alaba International, Electrical Electronics, Satellite Time, you will not learn a single Yoruba. Because what is being communicated to there is evil language. And you find out that most people that come to buy their evils and the houses and the rest of them. So now, why will a nation with three tribes be, be judging things with tribalistic nature. This is what happened if you studied a, 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 a politics in school, a government in school. Not I'm not talking about the secondary school government. If you studied it in uh, if you studied it in the higher institution, you will be able to find out what actually happened. When, when the Yoruba has told their people, let's go back. The Asa has told their people, let's go back, and only one man remained. And you find that the, the, the fight of Nam the Azikiwe, who fought without prejudice. Of course, today many Igbos are blaming, blaming, blaming Dr. Nam the Azikiwe because of his fight. But because Dr. Nam the Azikiwe was very learned, he was civilized, and he thought that life was the same with every other person. Because if you are enlightened, if you are educated, you will reason in a different way. So, Dr. Nan Azikiwe was actually reasoning in a different way and, and the, the other tribes did not understand it. Of course, if you were to put it in that way, Dr. Nan Azikiwe would, wouldn't have been the president of Nigeria when uh, another man, now someone was, was the, the prime minister. Of course, you know the kind of government that was, that was involved at that time. The presidential a seat at that time was just ceremonial. And the Nandazikiwe was very educated and he understands what the government is all about. But because he wanted the peace of the nation, he was able to stay back and stay by. So, if you think about these things, you will find out that what is actually happening to Nigeria is a tribal issue. It is tribalistic for that matter. The, the Igbos are fighting for Biafra because the Igbos are being marginalized. So if you look at Peter B's comment on what he said, that the indigenous people of Biafra, the IPOB, as an acronym, is not a terrorist organization that he lives in our nature. Of course, you know, a Peter B's caliber, he's a kind of governor that does not move with a lot of, a lot of convoys and he's free in the, in the state that he's ruling because he put everything in order and he was putting his trust in God. So, look at this type of things. Then you tell me what you think about it. That is what is actually happening in the nation called Nigeria. Tribalism. Tribalism. And that is why the, the, the southeastern part of Nigeria are fighting, you know, tooth and nail to find, uh, to be able to be free. That is what happens in, in, in Catalonia and Spain. The, in Catalonia, uh, when people come to Spain, the Catalonians are the people that take care of them, teach them the Spanish language and all that, help the foreigners. And the, the, the Spanish uh, does not recognize the uh, uh, Catalonians. They, they, they don't appreciate their effort to make the nation move forward. And when the Catalonians look at this thing, they, they decided that what they need to do is to leave the country and have their own place and be able to exercise their choice and do what they really want to do. This is what is actually happening in Nigeria because the Igbos are not being appreciated as long as far as Nigeria is concerned. Go to Kanu, go to Kaduna, go to Lagos State. You find out that development that is actually happening around that environ are being done by the Igbos. The Igbo man likes to be comfortable where he finds himself. 
He likes to be, but an Hausa man cannot. Tell me, go to Owere. You will see Hausa people who deal in dollars. They don't have a house. They have not bought, bought a single land in Owere. The idea by that side, if you doubt what I'm saying, go to Owere. There is a place in Owere that is called Ama Hausa. You find out that the big men there are just living inside there. They, they, they live in a kind of a, a secluded area by themselves. They have not bought land, they have not bought shops, they have not invested anything. All they do is they make their money and go. But that's not the character of an Igbo man. Let me draw the curtain here, my people. Still remember that you are still on a misery news. Now we bring you the top most of the top news. Everything where they happen for all over the world. My brother, don't forget to like. My sister, don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to share. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, make you subscribe. Oh, make you know they hear correct news. You go say, you no know, go subscribe. No, so they be. Let me draw the curtain here. Catching the kegosi on Amen.